Welcome to Economics with Mr. Molden, uh, the Disequilibrium dis Edition. This is part four of the Supply and Demand series. Uh, up until this point, we've looked at demand, and then we looked at supply, and we added the two together and saw market equilibrium and how we find an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. Sadly, that is not always the controlling force for a market. Sometimes outside influences will help shift and set the market price. And in that case, we end up with what is known as disequilibrium. Um, and so we're going to look at what that does and how do we solve those issues in today's uh, edition of Supply and Demand. So here again is our Supply and Demand curve for the market of plastic dinosaurs. Uh, looking at this curve, we can all agree that this point right here is our equilibrium in which we have a agreed upon price and quantity by the market. Now, if supply and demand were controlling the market, that is what the price and quantity for plastic dinosaurs would be. But, since we're looking at disequilibrium, supply and demand aren't controlling this market. Let's say that the government comes in and sets a price floor. All right, a price floor is the lowest price that can be charged for an item. Now, if the government's setting a price floor, obviously this price is too low. And for a market, and so they're going to set the price higher. And so the government says, this is your new price. All right, so if we draw dotted lines across, and now instead of intersecting supply and demand at the same point, we have a place where it intersects demand and a place where it intersects supply. All right, this demand has a much lower quantity than where it intersects supply. So we have too much supply, not enough demand, both following the law of supply and demand, high prices, high supply, quantity supplied, high prices, low quantity demanded, you have too much supply and not enough demand. That's known as a surplus. How do you fix this? You lower the price. And it moves back towards equilibrium. Now, what's an example of something like this? Minimum wage. The government comes in and says, this is the lowest that you can pay an employee. If we let free market uh, intervene, the price would be too low. So by setting the price higher, you create a lot more people willing to work for that higher minimum wage than there is people willing to provide jobs at that point. Now sometimes, instead of setting the price higher than the equilibrium point and creating a price floor, the government will come in and say, that price is much too high for people to be able to afford, and so they'll set what is known as a price ceiling, where they set the price below equilibrium. And at this point, we have two intersection points instead of one. One in which quantity supplied is low, and one in which quantity demanded is high. This creates shortages. You have a lot more people wanting the product than there are producers willing to provide the product. A couple of examples, rent control and uh, a private industry, Ticketmaster, uh, is a price ceiling. All right. Now, how do you remember which one is a price ceiling and which one is a price floor? Think of it as an upside down house. All right, so now we have looked at what the supply and demand graphs look like for uh, disequilibrium. Uh, again, if you have a price ceiling, you have the price that's been set below market equilibrium. And so to fix that, you raise the price, which would increase uh, supply and decrease demand and then move back towards equilibrium. If you have a price floor, your price is set above the equilibrium price, you fix that by lowering the price. That increases demand, decreases supply, moving back towards equilibrium. So that is disequilibrium in a nutshell.